Hey, good evening. It's nice to see people tonight on the Radical Geek live stream. So welcome. I see Carrie is here. Strong is here. Hey, Jennifer. Long time no see. Tutu Q Cat is here. And of uh, course, yeah, so and Carrie has given his countdown on his uh, caffeine free day. I'm actually the opposite of caffeine free today. So hello, Brenda. And thanks for joining us. And Visual Keto's here. I know more people will be joining us, so we'll give things a couple seconds. Oh, and Renee is here. Hey. Uh, good to see you. So tonight, I'll just give you a little preview. Uh, sparkling water. Man, it is warm inside my house today, and I don't know why. And uh, Gigi is here. Good to see you again. But tonight, we're going to be doing, uh, we're going to be talking about Kimbo Coffee. They're an Italian coffee uh, from uh, Napoli, but they do distribute internationally. And I thought if we're doing an Italian coffee, you know, we've been using my V60 all the time because it's more or less my favorite. But I thought, let's do the mocha pot. So that's what we're going to do. Oh, that's good. I'm glad you like it, Tutu Q Cat. Which, by the way, the sun is like still uh, coming right in. So uh, not much I can really do about that. I am grateful for sunshine, though, because we don't have it all the time here in Ohio. So... Let's see. Oh, uh, Carrie says he was working on getting the info for Kimbo Coffee. He says they even make a sparkling water with Kimbo Coffee. Yes, uh, Kimbo Coffee is one of the ones that I like to have in the summer when I'll make like the disco ponies or just the disco coffees, which is the, we did it last year and we'll probably repeat it because it's so delightful. But it is a uh, little spurts of the citrus and the sparkling water over the coffee, the iced coffee delightful so let's see ah and hungry heath is here but uh making dinner ear hustling you know we always want to hear what you guys over from uh the uh hungry horde and the the warden and all of you are having for dinner uh i know that you usually just get home or get off of work on uh sunday i don't know if that changed yet or not but uh yeah so italian coffee the other thing we're going to be doing is a shared egg I know we've kind of talked about them in the past, but it's been a really long, long time. And I did teach people how to make a poached egg, which is a whole different animal. So we'll be talking about that. So let's see. I just kind of letting a few people join before we like dive in, but I'll be honest. Uh, mm. Ooh, Renee. Bought jumbo eggs and uh, cracked two for breakfast and they were both double yolks. Buy yourself a lottery ticket. That's what I'm saying. So we'll get into the actual Kimbo coffee uh, shortly here. But what I'm going to do is go ahead and get the actual coffee itself started. Uh, I'm going to use the mocha pot. Uh, if you're not familiar with the mocha pot, I'm actually I'm using the clear one. So that we can see it. Although it's going to go behind me on the stove. So, yeah, we'll, it's sort of. But what we're going to do is it has a filter with a little spout. It goes into the chamber. And then this uh, gets screwed up on top. And then we'll put it on directly onto the stove top. Hey, Sharon, nice to see you. Good that you're joining us. Uh, you're hustling, so uh, get until she can get upstairs. Oh, and Rickwin has joined us. Had to take the dogs out. Those dogs. I said that, and he looked, and my little dog is down here where he knows he doesn't need to be standing, but he's hopeful, and I don't know why, because I'm not the one who ever gives him anything. So. Oh, and Carrie says he liked using the mocha pot. James Hoffman has a perfect way to use the mocha pot. I don't know if my way is perfect, but it is technically correct. But we start by putting our coffee into the filter basket and I almost always I am not the greatest at this I almost always spill some you don't pack it in the mocha pot that's something that a lot of people do by mistake it's because they're thinking about espresso and in espresso you have to tamper down and uh, make everything you just need to level it off so you, you just make you do make it flat but you're not tamping it down it stays loose 
So I'm just going to set this back down and I'll probably spill some more because you need steady hands. But that's why I keep my nice clean little bowl. Well, it's not clean anymore, but you know, you just level it off. You don't have to be like super strict about weighing it out or measuring. It just goes into the little chamber. Now, here's the trick. I'm going to turn my stove on to get it heated up. I put it on eight. I don't know what that is in everybody's, but like not all the way high, but uh, higher than medium. You're going to take your boiling water and you pour it directly into the chamber. And inside the chamber, well, you can see on the outside, there's like a, well, it's too shiny. There's like a little bolt here. You want to bring the water up to right at the bottom of that bolt. That's your measure where the water for the mocha pot goes. So I just pay attention because it is boiling hot water and I just want to be careful that I don't burn myself too much. But uh, from here, it's really easy. You take your chamber full of coffee and drop it right in. Uh, this is why we have our little silicone things because this little thing gets hot. So we're going to screw this on. Takes a second. There we go. Almost. Like you don't have to squeeze it down, but you're going to do that. And where did I put the lid? Oh, there it is. You go ahead and you put your lid on the top and it goes right here onto the stove. We just let that go and you don't have to do anything until you hear it come to a boil. And the minute it comes to a boil, we're going to, and we'll see a little bit of fluid coming out. We'll take it immediately off the heat and I can bring it over here and set it on the table. Uh, I say, but I'm like, maybe I better put a towel on the counter for that. I don't know if my old fashioned 1970s counter will scorch or not. So safe than sorry. So air frying auntie is here. Uh, until it says technically correct is the best kind of correct. Sometimes, but sometimes doing things the wrong way produces better results when it comes to coffee. Eh. Let's see. Oh, let's see. Oh, oh uh, Renee remind us all to hit the like button. I see a cat in the background, so there, everybody, that was Balius in the back. Uh, let's see. Uh, Rickwin says taxes don't sound like fun, which they don't. A little bit of water on my stove freaked me out for a second. But, uh, all right, so the coffee is rising up. And now it's kind of just uh, keeping an eye on it. As it comes out, it's going to keep heating up. I've got a little bit of leakage here. So bring it, well, it fogged up so you can't see real well. But you can see the dark uh, down the middle. And it is brewing. And you kind of just kind of watch it like it slowed down. So now I'm going to put it back on the stove. With a, a little bit of heat, uh, a little bit lower now. And in the meantime, I'm going to talk about these sheared eggs. I have here my containers. These are uh, Chihuahua Mushi cups. They're actually uh, cups used for uh, Chihuahua Mushi, which is uh, the egg puddings like we uh, enjoy a, a lot in our uh, journeys, thanks to the uh, steak and butter gal. All right. It is boiling and burbling away. So I'm going to take it off the heat, set it on the towel. It's thinking. But as you can see, it's come up. It's uh, super, super dark and rich. Just kind of want to show you that in action. Don't be surprised. I didn't make like, I didn't put so much in there. I just keep it going a little bit, but uh, so these Chawamushi cups, they're made for that, but tonight we're gonna use them for uh, the sheared eggs. A uh, sheared egg is a baked egg, and we're gonna bake it in the convection oven. 
It's going to go for at uh, 320 degrees and we'll just have to keep an eye on it because it varies. I have no idea what makes the huge difference, but it's anywhere between 12 and uh, 20 minutes. So that's what we'll keep the eye out. All my animals are here underfoot where they don't belong. So I don't know what's the big deal. I can see way over there where their food is. They've got food, so it is what it is. So it's a little more fussy making coffee tonight, but I just really felt uh, the mocha pot was the appropriate for the coffee. Uh, Rickwin says he's been watching the storm chasers in Mississippi tonight, so hoping the storm will hit, oh, figure the storm will hit tomorrow at about 6 a.m. Well, be careful, Rickwin, will you? Uh, I will tell you, the windstorm that hit yesterday was something nuts, and it actually uprooted one of our trees and toppled it over, so we've got a big project ahead of us. All right, so my coffee is done. You can see. Delightful in the mocha pot. And I'm going to just let that sit for a couple minutes and then I will pour it into my cup and we'll be done. Uh, I'm a little bit scattered today in case you didn't notice. Oh, Sharon's watching on the big screen. Man, don't look at too man, too don't look at my mess too closely. <laughs> so, let's see. Uh, Rickwin, oh, Spong says she has one more day before her the next storm in his Cali. Can't really complain about the storms. Uh, so, Yep. Oh, and Carrie says the coffee looks great. So what I'm going to start is just going to get this going. I'm going to take my cups and I'm going to get my butter and throw some onto a little paper towel and we're going to generously butter the cups. Ah. Attila says the tree is the excuse to buy the uh, Ryobi cordless chainsaw. Do it. Just order it and we can pick it up tomorrow. May as well. Let's see. All people saying hello to Balius. So there's my first cup. And I am very generous with the butter because I love butter. We're going to add a little more in there as well. Uh, even though you don't necessarily have to with sheared eggs. So sheared eggs are a baked egg. That's all there is to it. Um, it gets confused a lot of the times with poached eggs or with coddled eggs. And so all three have their similarities, but they're not the same. So next week, I believe, we'll make a coddled egg so we can show them. Because we've done poached eggs before. Poached eggs go directly into the water. Sheared eggs and cottage eggs do not. And sheared eggs don't go in any water at all. So we've got this. Now, I was going to just make one plain, but I changed my mind. So we're going to add some bacon down in the bottom here. Our delightful bacon crumbles. Spill some on the counter. And... I also am going to tell you that I have my grated Parmesan Romano, but normally for a sheared egg, you would want a melty cheese like a Gruyere or a Gouda, but man, I was just in the mood for this flavor profile, so that's what we're doing. I've cracked my eggs, and I will tell you, you should crack your eggs before instead of directly into your baking dish. Here's why. You don't want to bust the yolk. Once you've busted the yolk, you can, your sheared egg is a dead. And you may as well mix it all up together and just make yourself a, a, a baked uh, mini frittata or something else. But, so, but if you do that, then it will definitely be totally fine. And you won't bust your egg yolk. So, and yes, I'm making two of them. It's two eggs. Uh... I could probably put a second egg in each one, but I'm not going to. I didn't know if anybody else would eat one or if I could tuck one away in the morning. But the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do some salt and pepper. 
I try not to be so scattered, but I'll tell you guys, it was a long day. And I just, it's one of those days where everything's a little bit more chaotic than usual because of being tired. So just also, now you know, so if you're tired, this is still an entirely doable dish. So pepper, don't get crazy with seasonings. I mean, sometimes I do like to spice it up with chili flakes, but for the most part, I like to put things in there. So a, a chorizo scrambled in the bottom or Italian sausage. And then I like to put some veggies on top sometimes. But in this case, we're gonna do two things. I'm gonna add a sliver, so I say, of butter because I love butter and I'm sure you do as well. And then I'm going to go ahead and add some chives because I love chives and so that's why. And then I'm going to put my cheese. These are little cups so you don't have to be too wild. Well, we do have to be too wild. It is me and my cheese. All right, so. Let me set this aside. There's one last very, very important ingredient. This is what makes the sheared egg a sheared egg. And then we'll go through comments. Heavy cream. We pour, I would say, do like a couple tablespoons worth. Sometimes people tell you like, oh, one tablespoon. Listen, that's for non-keto people. And I know that we worry about heavy cream some, but this is a delicate, rich egg dish. We can afford our, our uh, one and a quarter carbs for our two tablespoons of cream. Or at least I can. You don't have to, of course. And the other thing with this is, unlike some baked eggs, this is why the chow, the the Chihuahua Mushi cups work great for these because they are, you cover them. So let's see what we've got. I'm gonna preheat this. Bake. 320 for 19 minutes. And let's pour some coffee. All right. So, hey the warden, good to see everybody. We got our, oh, they got our, their plates, beef ribs, crab chili stuffed peppers and mushrooms. Wow, that was really all out. And then Carrie's telling a joke. He says, did you hear about the chef getting arrested? He was beating some eggs. Oh, the jokes. So this is a Kimbo coffee. Now, some Kimbo coffee facts while we uh, wait for the, because I didn't preheat in time. Uh, some coffee facts. Uh, Kimbo Coffee is a, this is the lightest of what they have. Uh, this is their uh, traditional. And you should know that Kimbo Coffee, we've talked about the fact that there's only two kind of beans in the world, the Arabica or the Robusto. And we've talked about how like uh, all of the coffees that claim that they are the strongest, most caffeinated coffees in the world are actually the same. They're 100% Robusto. So, but what Kimbo does is they uh, work with the uh, world-renowned uh, roaster uh, cafe uh, de Brazil, and they get they select their beans. They do follow all of those guidelines that we like in our coffees. If you are a little bit more of the granola country sort like myself, so uh, you know sustainably sourced, and they help out where the, the growers are. All of that stuff that we that I enjoy in a coffee roaster. So, uh, but they worked really hard. They've actually only been around since 1963. So really, I mean, I know that's a long time ago, but in terms of coffee, fairly modern. So they really worked hard on that. It was a uh, two brothers who started it up and uh, uh, their roasting method, they've got, uh, they've got like a, instead of just like the one hot and fast roast or the low and slow that we've talked about, they do like a three-step method. They take the beans green uh, and they dehydrate them first. 
then they do a short hot uh, roast and then they pull them back out and they do a, a long cool down to uh, room temperature and that's their main process for their roasting uh, they've got special tasters special baristas the whole nine yards that go with it so that's our Kimbo coffee facts now we use the mocha pot so it has to sit for a little bit longer than a lot of coffee because it's bo it's been boiled and I'm already over warm so mm. oh it's like heaven delightful I love Kimbo coffee but we don't buy it real often because yet we have to go out of our way and hunt it down so and you can order it from the internet and actually it's they do date their coffees uh, that's something I forgot about last week when we did dark matter coffee their coffees are also dated so you're not gonna get old stuff from the warehouse or stale coffees so uh, the other thing about Kimbo coffee which you can't really see on the camera but they talk about their coffees and they give you little coffee facts on their stuff in this case they're telling you uh, their intensity and uh, and richness uh, coffees aha wait it's time to put the eggs in so all right so now that's good to go we're really flying this evening so anyways, what was I saying? Oh, I was telling you about that. So like coffees, you know, like how I've talked about like in our Cheese Fridays that there are different uh, ratings and hard, you know, your hardness and your aroma. Uh, coffees have a similar thing. Like they have an intensity scale, which for some reason we never talk about. I think I've said it like in a couple really early coffee talks, but not really. Uh, but they've got, there's an intensity scale. It goes between like 1 and I can't remember if it's uh, 13 or 15. But uh, all of the Kimbo coffees are pretty far along on their scale. And some of them even brag about it. Like they'll be like this one, their, intensi their intensity one, it's actually called intensity, is like uh, 11 of 13. And that one is actually almost so strong for me. Let's see. Oh, that's right. Uh, let's see. Hunger He says, stay tuned for my upcoming cameo on the MS journey and the Warden Report. Oh, interesting. And he said he'll be right back because it's hard to uh, chat with uh, eating finger foods. So, fair story. Let's see. And Renee is saying uh, the Max Rabbit Cream is working great for the tender spots on the upper inner arm. Uh, so I have to go back and look for uh, some, some shading up there. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Renee got a big portion of their arm uh, a tattoo work done. So that's pretty cool. An exchange student too was thinking about making deviled eggs today but skipped it. Yeah, I wanted to do a lot of things but my motivation to do things was very low today. But I did go out with my kid and we had a lovely time because we went to the Asian market. So uh, I already have like a large quantity of roast beef and it was perfectly, perfectly rare. I also have some ground meat in beef broth. And so I was talking with uh, my friend Christy Davis and in her group, the Keto Village, they're talking about doing like a five day reset uh, where they're only doing keto chow. And initially I was like, I can do that. Sure, no problem. I can support you all and I can do five days where we're just having keto chow. But then I looked in my fridge and I was like, oh, that would be dumb. As much as I love my keto chow and uh, you know, a little stint of only keto chow dishes seemed very appealing. I don't it would be dumb to eat that instead of the meat in my fridge that would just go to waste. So I'm going to eat that in order to, since I have the ground meat in broth, I'm also supplementing it since we're at the Asia market. I bought my favorite, some beef belly. And since I saw in one of the groups, 
uh, actually I've seen in like a two or three groups where people have been kind of disappointed with their pork belly action. I picked up a little content, a little, uh, a little bit of pork belly and I figure maybe, uh, maybe, uh, later in the week we can fry up that pork belly. Maybe I can uh, film it with a cheese Friday. I don't know. Could be lots of things or maybe I'll just save it. I kind of got something special for Tuesday already though. So I don't want to make promises. I'll film it, but maybe I'll hold it and I'll do it in like a couple weeks. We'll see. So let's see. And Carrie says when he used to roast beans, beans he, uh, from the co-op, he would get his beans from the co-op in Brazil and they were some wonderful coffee. Uh, he doesn't, he doesn't miss it. He doesn't miss it from not drinking coffee. Okay. Hey, Marion. Yes, everybody's been around. So, uh, let's see, Sharon's been around a long time. You guys are right. So, anyways, since it came up and I'm wearing my apron, I thought I would let you guys know that this apron uh, came from Sharon Holloway, who is right here in our chat. Uh, she has uh, a business. The link to it is in the description. And she does all of these custom, she does custom embroidery. You can do a uh, request. Uh, there's some Hungry Horde uh, stuff on there. But I have a couple things to show you, to tell you about. Uh, at the first Keto Ohio meetup, everybody attended got these uh, awesome tote bags. This one is Attila's. And uh, we don't have more of them, but Sharon will uh, be able to, for $20, get you a Keto Ohio bag. It won't have the date on it, just our logo. But these bags are really good, high quality tote bags. Like these aren't the ones from the grocery store that you're gonna use for six months and then it's gonna be wore out. This is a lasting bag. And I'll tell you that, so I, we had this one, the Keto Ohio one. And let me see if I can, there you go. You can see the logo a bit better there. So really nice, uh, but I got myself a special gift from Sharon. And so check this out. Is that awesome or what? So I, I just wanted to put that out there that uh, take a look at her site and get yourself some lovely embroidered things. In addition to this, I don't have one here, but uh, she made uh, creamy koozies one for myself that has my Radical Geek logo and on one side and my name on the other. Uh, she made one for Attila. So uh, they're really well done. And I gotta say, if you like these aprons, you can see that this one looks like it fits me perfect, which might make you think if you've met me, oh, those aprons won't work for me because I'm real tall. Uh, they're adjustable, look. You can actually make it for, it, they would work perfect if you are very tall. You can uh, pull this out. Uh, the apron will expand appropriately. Uh, I've got it tied up pretty heavy in the back. So, and the nice thing is that it has three pockets. So perfect for outdoors. I wear it all summer. I was excited. I was like, oh, how long have the eggs been going? Oh. My dog is choking. He snarfed some water, you guys. So, I'm just kind of making a peek, make sure he's okay. Yeah, he's fine. I guess he was uh, thirstier than he expected. So let me get in here a little bit. I see there's been a lot of chatting back and forth, but I want to make sure. Oh, uh, Sharon says her chives are already up to about 10 inches in the, her herb garden. Ours is not really coming up all that great. Um, we usually have a whole bunch right now, but it's, I don't, I hope that, I think they're just going to be later in the season this year, which is fine. Lots of hellos back and forth. Uh, let's see. Oh, and uh, Carrie agrees that Brazil usually has some great beans there, like the, uh, some very premier beans there. Let's see, what else we got here? see Sharon let's see more things about Sharon lots of cool stuff here oh exchange student 2 is asking if I like the private selection coffee it's normally eight dollars but after a digital coupon you can find it in stock for a dollar ninety nine wow you know what actually I don't know that I've really tried it so maybe if I catch that deal we'll do a review on it and see what we think 
Let's see. Oh, uh, Brenda has a creamy koozie from Sharon and really loves it. Nice. Let's see. Agreement that we love the bags. And uh, Tutu Q Cat has a Sharon Holloway creamy koozie. So, yep. Oh, and Renee has her Keto Ohio bag in her Subaru. Definitely well used and sturdy. So, good, good stuff there. And Sharon is thinking I'm being sweet, but nope, I will say nice things about good products. So, and the warden is also saying that the, they love the except the amazing embroidery. Uh, excited for new boot wings. If you don't know what boot wings are, oh, okay, goodbye, Jennifer. Jennifer is saying that her phone won't stay charged, so she has to log off. So, let's see. And Exchange Student 2 says her aunt likes it. There was a breakfast blend and a citrusy one. Oh, that sounds interesting. Mm. I'm just enjoying the heck out of my little coffee here. It's delightful. So, just taking a look back there where the eggs are. Oh, Marion can't stay tonight either. I'm gonna watch on replay. Well, you have a lovely evening and I'm excited to uh, we got to see you for a little bit at least. So the other thing I have is I made, um, instead of the really big fat buns, we made buns, uh, little thin ones. But, so you can see, I'll bring this one up to the camera so you can see the inside. This is what they look like. They've got this nice texture. I'll come around. And then the inside. So. They're delightful and really lovely and buttery. And I'm just gonna pop it into the toaster oven for a few minutes uh, when I determine the eggs are done. So, okay, so boot wings go at the top of, of your uh, boots it, where the lace holes are, they lace on. And so they are sitting at the top of the cuff and they sort of, I can't lift my leg all the way up to my kitchen counter. <laughs> what am I thinking? Anyways, at the top of your cuff, on the sides so that they come out and they make like a cute little decorative wing. Uh, definitely want to take a look at them if you love fun things like that. I loved accessories for things like that on my boots. I'm going to give these a little peek. I need both the hot pads. Sorry to be quiet and have my back face to you. I just need a good look in there. Get my spoon. Very, very close. Just a couple more minutes, I think. So, uh, yes, boots like docks or whatever kind that you have. So sorry about the little silence there. I really had to focus on that little ceramic lid. So I'm going to throw my bread in there. And that'll toast up extra nice. Get a plate. Oh, and Sharon says uh, she'll message the warden soon. Let's see. Oh, and uh, more good nights to Jennifer. So that's the next thing I'm going to say. Uh, let's see. All right. Uh, let me see. I'm just trying to go through and keep back up. So I told you about the bags and Sharon's awesome embroidery things. Uh, the other thing I was going to tell you about is uh, we had our Keto Ohio meetup yesterday. And while we were out meeting and greeting and having fun, the tree fell in our yard. But it was enormous. It, uh, it was the whole 50 people, everyone was there being delightful. You know, it's really surprising. Everybody is nice. I know for a meetup, but like 
someone lost their jacket and like everybody pitched in to make sure it was found everybody was uh very concerned you know it's very easy to just sort of ignore something like that going around behind you in a large crowd uh, the restaurant killed it i will tell you that when they first started taking orders uh, they were being nice and going around to the tables and introducing themselves and talking and I was like listen I am ready to order and I just ordered so nobody else ordered but I was like I am hungry and you can stagger it we don't care uh, and I ordered I had a ribeye steak and loaded broccoli and the steak was really tasty I ordered it medium rare closer to rare than medium rare and they got it it was nailed and it was nicely salted. Uh, I brought my own butter though because I never trust what they have at the restaurant. I'm never sure. So I brought butter in a little container and I was told that that might be weird but I was like I just don't care. My little container in my bag did not matter. Oh and Sharon says they're trying to work out adding dragonfly wings onto flip flops. Oh that would be cool. Ooh, Let me think on that. If I come up with anything cool, I'll let you know. I feel like you might need to do some kind of clip structure, but I'm not sure. So, mm. Oh, and Visual Keto, oh, thank you for mentioning that about my, about my house. Yes, we're very fortunate. The tree is down. We're gonna get a chainsaw and cut it up and it did not hit anything all my grills are fine my griddle is good it didn't even touch it just some chairs and our swing knocked over so that's a good good thing oh and sharon said bringing the butter was a good call that they that uh they didn't have real butter that's good to know yeah uh because i did enjoy my steak I know people try like a lot of really cool foods and I was just like wow when I looked at the menu I didn't feel quite that brave and I knew I wanted to really be uh, make sure that I didn't give myself any additional issues oh and uh and Renee says Shelly brought yummy butter into the Brazilian it was it was so good yeah and so coming up in May is a is an Indiana meetup so I signed up for that that's going to be a bit of a trip, but I think well worth it. Let me get these eggs out. Sorry, guys. Just give me a second to pull this out and bring it over. I am burning up today. Phew. All right. So let's see, let's start the whole adventure. I'm gonna start by putting some butter on my little toasted bun now because I think that we might be noticing a theme here that today I am wanting butter. I love butter and today I love butter more than other days and I don't know what causes that craving other than I think that it means that, that your body wants more fat. But, oh, it's so nice and crunchy. And let me pull one of these eggs over and get it onto my plate. Woo. I almost burned myself on there. I felt like the heat getting real close to my hand. I was like, no. Oh yeah. So here's how it looks. I may have overcooked it. Figures. Let's see. Oh no, it's delightful. The yolk just spilled out. And there's no good way to show you on camera. But the whites are all nice and solid. And then the yolk just burst into and has blended in with the butter and all that cheese. Just getting in here, giving it a little bit of a stir up. Oh, you guys, so, so good. So I can pull a piece of the white and show you. It just comes out too hot to eat a big bite right now. So I'm going to let that breathe for a minute. And I'm going to take the lid off of this one. 
Let me put my air fryer back together. It'll wait. It can sit there till after the stream. So it's just so hot that I don't want to bring it around to, to show you guys, but I'm going to eat both of these. There's just nothing to it. But yeah, so it's just, I don't know how to explain. They're just so lovely and decadent. Oh, and Carrie says he, that it's good to hear about the, the tree not hurting anything. He says he would have freaked out in a storm. He has two big oak trees and one in the front and in the back. Yeah. Oh, and Tutu Cute Cat will be at the Indiana meetup. Awesome. It's so, it's very hot and I want to eat it so bad. But it is super warm in my kitchen and the warm food in my face. It, man, I feel like my face is on fire. Mm. Oh yeah, it's nailed today. You know, sometimes you don't get stuff exactly perfect and it needs like a little adjustment. You're like, well, that's good. I got lucky because live streams are perfect for things to go awry. And today it came out perfection. The butter and the cream and then the baking with the lid I will tell you the first time I made uh, seared eggs, they were horrible. But it was because when I would read about it online, they didn't say about the lids and covering it. So I was trying to get it baked through and it just was like the egg whites would be all snotty, disgusting. And I couldn't get it cooked proper. And it turned out the secret is actually covering your, your dish. So, but, mmm. I want to eat more of it, but it's so hot. Oh, and uh, Renee says she's been separating the white and the yolks, whipping the whites with a hand whisk uh, that she uses for coffee. Cook fluffy whites like until it's a crispy egg, then you add the yolk in. Yeah, eggs in a cloud. I don't think we've made eggs in a cloud on the stream before, but that's another one on my... I, I thought about that. I almost thought about doing that today instead of this, but I didn't. I wanted the coddled eggs really bad, uh, mostly because I've been wanting the butter so much. Mm. Oh, so good. And the nice thing is that these are entirely flexible because like I said, you can put anything in them. Um, sun -dried, a couple sun-dried tomatoes in there, fabulous. Uh, has it? I want to use these again. Has it been? Do you guys want to do egg puddings again? The Chihuahua Mushies, like we can call it the proper name and everything. The other thing about these sheared eggs is they are delightful with your toast. Ah, oh, cheese pool. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, and Exchange Student 2 is saying, what's for next week? I haven't done a stuffler in a while. Hmm. I kind of wanted to carry through on the eggs, though, to show the coddled egg. Because they're very similar. But I don't know that people really grasp, like, a lot of the differences. But, yeah. And uh, Carrie says he would like to see egg puddings again. But I almost did a stuffler. But let me think on that just a smidge. I have an idea brewing in my head. Let's see, Air Fry Nanny says she's been listening, but of about 24 cuts for their chipboard albums who are missing one and had to figure out which. Oh, I hate when stuff like that happens. It's so aggravating because you get really lost. Mmm. Mmm. I'm just telling you, phenomenal. And paired with this good sturdy coffee, the best. Mm. So definitely I hit the hit the right spot. 
So let's see, what do we got going on? So what other questions do you have? Like, the, this is a little short today. I don't know. So we talked about the meetups. Hmm. You guys, I can't stay out of it because they're so delicious. And uh, my, you know, your yolk bent blends in. Oh, and uh, Carrie says that they would be some baby eggs since they're coddling. Just play, on, just a play on word. Yep. And Hungry He says their beef ribs were special. They got three bones that was marked down to just under eight dollars. Nice. And the warden says they're thinking of the muffaletta stuffler for a Friday night feast, which would be nice. I I have to say, when I made the stuffed the the stuffalata, I can't remember what I call it. Something clever like that. I mushed the words together. The stuffalata, oh, it was phenomenal. I really loved it. Um, So, but it's true that I haven't made a stuffler thing for a while, and I kind of have an idea. So hang tight on that. We're going to see which route I take, but uh, I would say pay attention for the Tuesday uh, video posting, because that where, that's where my mind is thinking on right now. And I think that that will be a good place. Uh, you never know what's going to show up in there. And you know that I'm a crazy person, so. Mm. So an exchange student, too, says she bought liquid allulose, but she's never seen it in the recipes, always powdered. Is your liquid allulose more syrupy, or is it thin, like with a dropper? Because I've seen both. Uh, but most of the time, I find the liquid allulose is um, more viscous than I care for in a lot of recipes. So I do use the powder, and sometimes if I want syrup, I'll make my own syrup or my own uh, liquid sweetener out of it. So you can absolutely, anywhere that you use a liquid sweetener, you're welcome to use the liquid allulose. It does sometimes... Uh, need more than you expect because it's not as sweet as the other sweeteners that we're used to so you have to keep that in mind but uh obviously it's nice oh and hungry he says he wore his apron that sharon made him while he did his sunday supper cook smoked beef ribs and 10 pounds of pork loin as well as bacon and 12 one third pound burgers on the blackstone nice so some meal prep then. Hmm. Mm, 22Q Cat says uh, they don't use their stuffler often enough. They need new ideas. Mm. I'll tell you, the two of my favorite things to have in the stuffler, in the stuffed waffle, are breakfast. Like I like to make my plain uh, waffle batter and put in um, scrambled eggs and uh, sausage patties and a little bit of crumbled bacon. That's my very favorite. The other thing that I really love is, um, I forgot, what? Oh, the cheesecake. Uh, we made the cheesecake and that's why I say pay attention on Tuesday because you never know if something will repeat or if it'll be a similar variation, oh, what kind of fun stuff we might come up with. But uh, uh, the other, oh, oh, and the buffalo chicken stuffler. Man, that buffalo chicken one was de freaking delicious. Uh, but it did take me a couple days to eat it because it was very, 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 very hearty. Uh, I mean, I always like all the stufflers, but. Uh, if I'm taking my top three out of all of the ones I've made, I think those are it. Uh, pizza stufflers are always fine, but honestly, everybody's done it. And I, the, the, the novelty is worn off for me for a pizza as the flavor in there. I'd rather just have a cheese disc with pepperoni and maybe a little sauce for dipping. So. Ooh, 
Ooh, exchange student two says she never wears an apron. The last time she made beef bacon, she got a mess splattered on her. Oh no. I hope that you didn't get burned though, because those little popping burns from uh, any kind of bacon are weirdly pinchy. And then they hurt like two days after the fact. Hmm. Oh, and Efren Annie watched everything everywhere all at once. She thinks she needs therapy now. It is that kind of film. But was it good? I I was blown away. But I'm getting ready to watch what I think is like one of my second favorite movies ever. Uh, of course, for me, my favorite movie ever, ever, ever is The Linguini Incident because it's utter weirdo chaotic nonsense you know i mean of course because it's rosanna arquette and david bowie and they're weird musicians working at a bar plotting crimes so you know how can you go wrong but my other very 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 favorite and i think it's a favorite for a lot of people is a movie called true romance i i, I definitely think you should uh uh, give that a watch if you've never seen it. It is an older film, but definitely one of those ones that you want to that you want to pick up. Mm. Mm. I'm just saying, this this hits the spot tonight. Let's see. And Air Fry Nancy says, yes, she did like the movie. It was bizarre, but it was good. And Hunger Heat can attest, speaking to the length for Sharon's apron, at six foot two, it fits in perfect. And Air Fry Nancy, I don't know if you'll like true romance or not, but you might look it up first before you uh, get it. But uh, it, again, it hits my one of my top favorite movies ever. Uh, I did see, though, that a new season of Mandalorian will be up soon. So that's coming up for the TV. And Sharon says that Hunger Heath has the full adult size apron. So. And let's see, uh, Hungry Heath is asking if we've all, if any of us have seen the menu called The Menu. Now, I've seen the movie, The Menu, and I don't know how I felt about The Menu. It was okay. I enjoyed it, but I don't know. I wanted more. It was pretty good. It, you know, I, it wasn't a bad movie or anything, but it was pretty good. Oh, Sharon says The Mandalorian is up now. Uh, Carrie, yes, it is. It's a TV show. The Mandalorian is a TV show. Hmm. I was glad that, I'm really glad that I picked that Parmesan, even though it was not a normal cheese for a, uh, for the, for a sheared egg. Uh, it plays with the chives and the bacon super nicely. Hmm. Let's see. Oh, and Air Pride Annie says, yes, the menu, that was a wow, or was it a whoa? So, speaking of other bizarre movies, it's way older. But if you like weird movies, like the menu... And I don't mean necessarily horror, but I mean offbeat, quirky, strange kind of humor. Try the movie Thank You for Smoking. Uh, it's very funny. But do know it is very, very sarcastic. Hugely sarcastic. So, uh, if you're not a person who's into sarcasm and that kind of uh, dark humor, you won't like it. But if you enjoy some dark humor and a heavy dose of uh, Gen X uh, dark uh, black humor, uh, you know, very morose. So, yeah, 
it's hilarious. Like, oh my gosh, it is very, very funny. Oh, uh, I'm just trying to think of like other things. Like, I don't know, what other? I could use some recommendations too. Hmm. And Air Fry Nanny says she heard the premise was written after the writer went on a dinner excursion in that type of situation. Oh, interesting. Oh, and uh, Renee says dark humor and sarcasm. Nah, not me. But uh, she did like that movie as well. I think you mean the uh, thank you for smoking? And Airfire Nanny says she started watching Yellow Jackets on Showtime and uh, plus several episodes and not watching any more because it got to be too dark. But Carrie says he has his witty humor. You do. Hmm. I can't stop eating my egg. It's just like so good. And you can tell I'm powering through my coffee tonight as well. It's for the best though because uh, I will tell you you remember how I told you guys that I caught my uh, industrial piercing on my bike helmet and I really hurt my ear. So it started to get a little bit better and then all of a sudden it got infected and ear piercings do that. So wasn't really that worried about it, but it's just, it, it's not getting better. It's been like a month since that happened. And so I finally I called the doctor and he gave me antibiotics and they are messing me up you guys so and i still have to take uh two more doses today because i'm uh, behind on my time so i need to take one like right after the live stream and then again right at bedtime so let's see oh i'm just watching the chat so uh I'll tell you about the, the meetup yesterday. I'll also tell you that after the keto meetup, we went to a board game meetup at our local board game bar. And can I just say, it was packed in there. And it was so great to see. I actually felt, this was the first time we'd been back there uh, since the pandemic. And it was so good to see some of the people there again. And also... It was interesting, but it felt like it seemed like they uh, came out of the pandemic actually better off than before. So I was really glad to see that. So, and we got to play uh, a couple games. I played one, and now I can't remember the name of it, but it's very, very Tetris like. And uh, Attila was with me, and he got to play uh, Boss Monster, which is a really fun uh, card board game. So, card based board game. So that was lovely. Let's see. All right, Air Fry Nanny says there were no real yellow jackets in the Yellow Jackets TV show. So that's good. I hate yellow jackets. They are the worst. Well, hornets are the worst. Yellow jackets are right there though. Mm. And we sometimes get yellow jacket nest in our yard. Horrible. I'm always afraid that of getting swarmed, and uh, Attila's been swarmed a couple times by the, the yellow jackets. Luckily, I think he got only a few stings and uh, was uh, other, you know, which is not good, but thank goodness that he didn't get like swarmed and uh, attacked and, you know, dangerously so. So periodically we have to pay attention to that and get the exterminator because while I try not to uh, get rid of uh, the bugs and the spiders and stuff, yellow jackets and hornets are the exception to my rule, and they can just get right out of here. Uh, they do not have a lot of redeeming value to the environment. They actually are harmful to bees. Uh, they are mean, and so uh, I don't feel guilty about getting rid of them. Oh, Carrie, that would have given me a heart attack. He says, uh, last week after leaving the church, he had a yellow jacket land on his window outside while he was driving. So, and Air Fry and Auntie reminds us that the yellow jacks, jackets don't even have the courtesy to die after biting you. So, uh, you know, yeah. 
and Sharon says they've had two hornets nest. Definitely not good. Yeah. So I don't feel bad about killing the yellow jackets or the hornets. They can die with the fire and lots of it. Uh -huh. And then uh, Sharon says they waited till winter and then bagged and burned the nest. Good idea. Good thinking. Yeah. Mm. All right, everyone. I'm going to finish eating my eggs. It's nice and toasty, this one still. Let's see. Oh, and Hunger Heath says the mascot for his high school where he grew, grew up was the Yellow Jackets. And Carrie does say it's sad when the bees sting that they die. It is. Uh, we have a bee-friendly yard. And, in fact, onto the side of my driveway, we've actually made uh, what I call my bee plot. Because I've got uh, rows of lavender plants. And then I've got my mint and my uh, lemon verbena. So th between those two th those things. And then we've got, uh, to the side of the house, uh a plant called bee bomb so we keep that we are very bee friendly and in our backyard I we let all of the violets and dandelions go absolutely hog wild you know not the popular thing in the uh, in the suburbs to have your wild crazy yard but I love it I love violets uh, we picked violets and we made an allulose and violet syrup last year I hope to do that again we pick the dandelion greens and we use them in salads or if we get a good batch of them, we'll saute them up in some bacon fat. Delightful. So uh, we, lo we love that kind of stuff. So anyways, I'm gonna go off for the evening. I'm glad that you got to spend time here with me. I'm glad I got to spend time with you guys. Sorry, I was like a little scatterbrain and it's only coming together now. Maybe in addition to being tired, I was hungry. Probably. And uh, Air Fry Nanny is going to end us on the Yellow Jackets are more attracted to meat. They're carnivorous little suckers. They sure are. So let's see. Um, Renee is going to refill their hummingbird feeders. Starting to trickle in. Oh, I wish our hummingbirds would come back here. So, all right, everyone. You have a lovely evening. Uh, Leave some comments on what you want to see next week in terms of recipes. I've been running a little thin mentally on, on the recipe. Uh, again, I think it's part of it is just stress piling up from the work. But you have a great evening, and I will see you guys on Tuesday. You have a good one. Bye-bye. Oh, see? I'm losing it. Good night for reals. Bye-bye. <laughs>